Hello everyone and welcome on back to my channel. As always, thank you so much for coming back and joining if you are one of my returning subscribers. And if this happens to be your first time stumbling across one of my videos, welcome. My name is Monet and here on this channel, I am documenting my financial journey. I am 27 years old, I am a cash budgeter. And yeah, here I'm just sharing my financial journey and how I am managing my money. So if you are interested in that type of content and you enjoy what you see then definitely be sure to hit that subscribe button down below and join the family and hit the bell so that you'll be notified whenever i upload my next video so as we can see with the paper in front of us today we are going to be looking at my sinking funds it's been a minute since i did one of these um, but typically what i like to do is at the end of each month i track my sinking funds to see where they stand at the end of the month and what I spent my money on. So this month, I know for a fact the sinking fund that got used the most was travel. So we're going to see where that is and what I managed to do for the month of April. But if you are interested in seeing how I do that, then just keep on watching. Okay, so as always, I always want to preference that if you enjoy this budget sheet that I am using, it is available as a digital download within my Etsy and my website. All of the sheets that you see me use, I have them available within a budget kit. I make them for each month. So if you want to test it out, try it, all of the information for that will be down in the description. So the first thing that I like to do is fill out the top of my sinking fund sheet and i'm going to list the funds the starting balance how much i added to them for the month how much i used for them within the month and then the end balance so the first place to get our starting balance is that i look at the month prior so this was the sinking fund sheet that i did in march i think i did this one off camera because towards the end of march that's when i went on my vacation so i didn't have time to film but this was my sinking fund sheet for March if you're interested. But all I'm going to do is list the end balance as my start balance for the month of April. So let me go ahead and fill that out. Okay, so looking at the funds that I have at the start of April within annual payments, I had $155. Car maintenance had $1,162. Car insurance with $370. Christmas with $320. Gifts with $120. Household $165. Medical $540. And travel $180. So that's a grand total of $3,012 saved within my sinking funds at the start of the month. So the next thing that I do is down here within the transactions log, I just document any money that got added to the funds and any money that was taken out and specify why I took that money out so I can reflect, look back and reevaluate how I want to use my sinking funds. I just always like to make sure I'm reflecting on my finances because your budget can always change and I don't want to get into the habit of just doing the same thing just for the sake of it. I always want to make sure I'm being strategic with my money and saving it for a purpose. So the way I validate my end balance is that I will take out my cash envelopes referring to my sinking funds, set them to the side and add them up to make sure everything is equaling correctly. All right, so going in order of the funds, first up we have annual payments. So I will write that as the fund. And for any money that I added from my paycheck or that you guys saw me cash within my cash envelope stuffing videos, I just notate that as income. So for the month, annual payments received a total of $60. I did not take anything out of this sinking fund. So we're just gonna go ahead and add 60, zero. So if we started with $155, we added 60 and we took nothing out. That means our end balance in this envelope should be $215. 
So grabbing my annual payments envelope. In here we have 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 20, 40, 60, 70, 80, 90, 200, 10, 15. So that is correct. $215 saved within annual payments. All right, now we can move along to car maintenance. Car maintenance also received money from my paychecks, so income. And for the month, that's going to be $40 that was added. I am in desperate need of a car wash, but I did not get one for this month. But that is definitely on my agenda to do this weekend. It's going to be a nice hot day. So I feel like that's the perfect time to go outside and give my car a nice deep clean. So looking at car maintenance. Oh, let me finish filling this out. So we added 40. I took nothing out. So if this envelope started with 1,162 plus 40, I should now have $1,202 saved. So we have $1,000 placeholder. This just means that $1,000 is in the bank. And in cash, we should have 202. So 100, 20, 40, 60, 80, 90, 200, one, two. So that is correct. 1,202 within car maintenance. All right, moving on, it is car insurance. For the month, this fund received $70. And I did not take anything out. But this morning, you guys, I received the email of my car renewal that I'm due to pay because I pay my car insurance every six months. And in May is when I am due. So I saw the number that they suggested that I pay for six months. And I'm, I'm going to call them because this is the same thing that happened last time where it was just like, a ridiculous amount but when i call them and express that the price is high or that i'm interested in going somewhere else or that i've been a loyal customer for such and such years magically they're able to find some discount somewhere so let me know if that's also something that you guys do because i'm finding that it's a habit that i'm gonna have to continuously do because i don't think the price that they quoted me is correct but we have 370 at the start of this month. We did add 70, we added $70 to this envelope. So I should now have 440 saved in here. So here's car insurance. We have 100, 200, 20, 40, 60, 80, 300, 20, 40, 60, 80, 400, 20, 30, 40. That is correct 440 and i am trying to pay honestly i don't want to pay any more than 500 dollars um because last time my car insurance was 450 so i feel like a generous amount is a 50 dollar increase if that so the fact that it was over 500 dollars is just crazy to me so i will be calling them this weekend all right moving on we have christmas Christmas also received funds this month and for the month this envelope got $40 so we will add 40. I took nothing out. We are just trying to save 320 plus 40. I should now have $360 for Christmas. Here is Christmas. And we have 100, 20, 40, 60, 80, 200, 20, 40, 60, 80, 300, 20, 40, 60. So that is correct. 360 within Christmas. Next, we get into gifts. Gifts, I am trying to build this up because I want to use this money as spend money for Mother's Day. My mom is flying out to see me, I think in two weeks now. So any spending that we need, I just wanna take it out of this envelope. So for the month, this received $20 and I took nothing out. So 120 plus 20 means that I should have 140. So I think I'm gonna have one more paycheck before my mom gets here. And I think 150 is you know, good enough for anything that we may need to get into. So we have 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 10, 20, 30, 35, 40. So correct, $140 within gifts. 
Next, we move on to household. And household this month from my income received $25. And then I also used household. I was on Amazon and they got me. I am a sucker for like organization. And I am trying to change the layout of the under the sink area within my bathroom for my hair care. And I needed like a double shelf that's tall enough to hold like shampoo, conditioner, like my big bottles of hair care product. And I have to put it together. I think that's another thing I'm gonna try and put together this weekend and see how that looks. And then I also got organization knickknacks for the kitchen. Did I need them? No. Do they make me happy? Yes. Is it in my budget? Yes. <laughs> As long as we don't put it on debt, I feel like it's good. So that was $50 altogether once everything was done. So if we add $25 and take out 50, we start this envelope with 165 plus 25 minus 50. So I should now have $140 within this envelope. Here's household. We have 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 10, 20, 30, 35, 40. Yep, 140. Same amount in gifts is the same amount in household. All right, the next one that we have here is medical, but medical I did not add and I did not take out. So I will put zero for both. And that should be $540 still within this envelope. So we have $500, another placeholder, and then 20, 30, 35, 40. So that is correct. 540 for medical. All right, now we get into the last envelope, which is always my busy envelope. And we are talking about travel. So for income this month, travel received $304 and then noting the things that I took out. So first for travel, regarding my trip that I took to Puerto Rico for the wedding, plus um, I went away to Dreamville as I shared with you guys. I just put all of that spending in one category and by the time I came back home, it was $200 um, if you add up all the spending across all of that. So I didn't anticipate on spending that much. I underestimated how much money needed to be spent while we were at the wedding. I was under the impression, and I don't know why, that I wasn't going to have to spend that much money on food. But since we were there for like three to four days, I had to pay for my own food, you know, for every day besides the wedding, because the wedding was the only time that food was paid for. But we were restricted to you know certain spots that we could eat in when it's a tourist spot i feel like they jack up the prices so i wasn't prepared to do all that spending but the nice thing is that i did go with my mom so sometimes i paid sometimes she paid so it was a nice balance and then for travel i also went ahead and booked a flight so i booked a flight for my mom's birthday my mom's birthday is the end of june and then i also booked the flight to go see my cousin sorry i can't talk and write at the same time so <laughs> i booked the flight to also go see my cousin who lives in florida and she is doing a housewarming um so i've seen her house already i think i've spoken with you guys i see that cousin all the time but this is her official housewarming party where everybody's coming and she got her furniture and everything so of course i have to go see her these are like very close back to back so once i leave from my mom i am going to fly directly to florida to hang out with my cousin and all of this is very close to fourth of july weekend so the price was not the best. I mean, I bought it at the top of the month. And plus, she lives in Florida, as I just said, but she's close to Disney and Universal. So I'm gonna be there for a week. So of course I'm gonna go to Disney and Universal. So that's really a vacation within a vacation within a vacation. So I'm excited. Yeah, I just went ahead and bought that flight. But the nice thing is, is that since I'm flying so much, like this is the most I've ever flown in my life, I had some flight credits that I was able to use. 
and I just recently got a travel credit card. So now I'm getting like points for traveling and I use some of my points also to help get this ticket. So I'm really seeing the benefit of it. And after everything was said and done, that was $140 spent. So I felt like me going to two places, South Carolina and Florida during 4th of July weekend, that was a steal for me. So gave me something to do for two weeks so I don't have to be home. But yeah, once again, travel is being used. So if we go ahead and note the 304 that we added, and then 200 plus 140, that's 340 that we spent. This envelope started with 180. So after all the calculations, we are left with $144 within our travel. So we have 120, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, which is correct. And this will get built up very soon because I'm already talking about making another vacation with my best friend. So I just can't stay in one spot. I feel like to make me feel better, once a month, I wanna do something. It doesn't always have to be something lavish, flying somewhere, but I just feel like once a month, I need something to look forward to. So yeah, my travel is like travel slash entertainment. So anything fun, I just, put that in travel. All right, so now that we have all of our sinking funds accounted for, let's go ahead and total up this end balance and see what we get. All right, so that's a grand total of $3,181 saved within our sinking funds. So slight progress from the month prior, but once again, the sinking funds are meant to be spent and they just help me stay again within my budget. If it's not on debt, we are doing okay. All right, you guys. So as always, I hope you enjoyed the video. That is literally all I do with tracking my sinking funds. And now I am ready to enter the new month and see what we can do regarding that. If you enjoyed this video, let me know down in the comments below. Be sure to give the video a thumbs up because that's another way to let me know you guys are enjoying it. And it also helps and supports the channel. So I really do appreciate that. Uh, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. If you're thinking about it, go ahead, hit that subscribe button, join the family. But with all of that, you guys, that's all I have. And I will catch you all next time in my next video. Bye, guys. Thank you.